multiple wins this year, including the oldest race on the calendar, Milano Torino. Look out for him. Second to Jonathan Milan on stage two. Milano, we know about third on that stage. Canter, you've talked about. What about Jonathan Narvaez? Will it be a day for him? Oh, I think it would be for Viviani today. Already a stage win to the good. But because of the width of the road, teams can leave it. We saw Jaco Alula, and they will be looking after Blake Quick, but right the way down the back of the peloton. But what you can do on a road like this is it's a little bit of a gamble, but more and more teams are doing it, not committing anybody to the front, but then combining all those resources for a far more intense, shorter effort to drop your man off very late. And here they are on the right-hand side. Dries de Bont has picked up six points today in the points classification. He now has a 15-point lead over his closest challenger, who is Jonathan Milan, Jens Reinders, Olaf Koy, Jensen Plowright, still in the top five in that competition. That's something that's going to be fought for right until the very last pedal stroke tomorrow. The general classification differences are minimal as well. We know that it's a flat finish tomorrow, but there's two climbs, and there's still an opportunity to change things. So Milan Fader in the red jersey there has to be careful. On the left, it's Tudor Pro Cycling who appear. They're looking after Arvid de Klein today. Alongside them in the blue, red and white, you can see Lotto Destiny jersey supporting Arnaud de Lee, the sprinter from Wallonie, Wallonia in Belgium. UAE Team Emirates with Molano and their white and black, the Emirati team. The blue and white squad supporting, we think, Blake Quick for Jaco Alula move up as well. It's fighting for position and well. The washing machine's not quite on full spin yet, but it's certainly on a soft cycle. It certainly is. I wonder who's going to come out in the rinse at the end. That's the big thing here, isn't it? Left hander coming up very shortly, in about 500 metres, in fact. Hard left. And they continue for a kilometre and a half. And the final right-hander comes with about 1,400 metres to go. The speed has picked up. You can just see on the right-hand side. On our left, it is a drag strip battle between UAE Team Emirates, Tudor Pro Cycling and Bahrain Victorious for this left-hander. There is the left-hander with three kilometres to go. UAE win the battle into that as Dries de Bock tries to hang on at the back after having done his job and emptied the tank yet again digging on to four and three-quarter hours for the longest stage of this year's Tour of Guangxi. And there is our first view of the Li River and of Guilin. This city so important during the Second World War, by the way. Many refugees from all over China came here and it became a big cultural centre as a lot of the main cultural figures came to be as safe as possible here. Big transport hub, and ever since that massive population explosion and migration in the 40s, things have continued. This is one of the main tourist centers and cities in the whole of Guangxi. It's the international peloton who arrive into town today. They'll be racing on its streets again tomorrow, but for this fifth stage of six, the penultimate day of World Tour racing in this 2023 season, it's the top World Tour team in the league table. It's UAE Team Emirates who are pulling at the front with their Colombian sprinter Molano trying to do something behind. The team from the Arab Gulf, though, is waiting. The red jerseys. Yes, Bahrain victorious, looking to be that as we see moves left and right. And they're timing Whoa. it now. We're coming up to that turn you talked about, Matt. It's coming up in about 400 metres time. And look at everybody rushing to the front, fighting to try and take the turn now. Yep, that was Michael Vink who's just swung off on the front. Bahrain victorious in the orange, a big spearhead. He was uh, Ineos Grenadiers moving up on the inside. There's a few rods from Lidl Trek moving up as well, looking after Abra Story. And now this is the final right-hander. It's a sweeper again. No need to touch the brakes at all. In fact, it's just a meandering quarter, but it has thinned things out a little bit. 1,500 metres to go now, Rob. And again at the front, they take it up. Ineos Grenadiers have been much more controlled today. Of course, when they won with Viviani, the positioning was excellent. He had that turn of speed. He now sits a little further back. He's picked the wheel of Jonathan Milan. In the meantime, his teammates are at the front on the left-hand side with Ethan Hayter on their wheel. Interesting approach for Ineos Grenadiers as we're now coming into the final kilometre. And through the centre, you can see as they pass through that Flamme Rouge, Adrien Petit on the front of the race, Narvaez just behind him. Kralsveik and Father further behind, on the left we're seeing moves. And Jaco Alula trying to still march on the other side of the road. There's so much road to choose from here. But on the right-hand side as we look at it, that's the most advanced position to be. 
they're desperately fighting to be there. Moby Star on the left as well, trying to lead out Max Kander. They decide they have to follow. 400 metres to go now as Rajovic is trying to lead things up. Milan is ready to go early again as Narvaez peels off. Arbeda Sturi is in there. The clown in the black jersey trying to move up as well. Viviani is following on the right hand side. Molano's there as well. He waits and Milan goes. Milan goes. 200 go. In the yellow, you can see it's Coy trying to hit the front again. On the right, as we look at it in the black and white, Molano coming up. But they're all coming to the line together. They're all coming to the line together. But they're all following Sebas Molano. Arms up as he crossed the line. And it looks as though UAE Team Emirates have their moment of glory. Sebas Molano takes the victory. And it was so tight, so close. Almost too much road to choose from. But it was Sebas Molano who chose correctly and who had the turn of speed. Stage five in Guangxi goes to Molano. Stage five goes to UAE Team Emirates. What a sprint there by Juan Sebastian Molano just coming up the inside. The man that opened it up first was, well, was the man who's already taken the stage this, this uh, race, Jonathan Milan. He had Olaf Koy in his wheel, but taking a different line just on the inside was the man from Colombia who takes another World Tour win. He is now a thoroughbred winner, isn't he? So, so, for so long, the lead out rider, but now is really flourishing. Well, into, well, 28 years of age. It seems like he's been around a lot longer than that, but that was a one superb sprint. It'd be nice to deconstruct that again. Look at it from the air just to see how he picked himself. He picked his way through, but chose the left-hand side.